Hi, it's Wednesday the 2nd of March. This is just a quick intro because I forgot to record an intro but um, here's some footage from uh, my studio showing a couple of things I'm working on at the moment. So when I'm preparing to do a new bird, one of the first things I do is to look at lots of photos and um, look at the main colours on the bird and um, I print out maybe just one sheet of photos like I've done for the kingfisher there or sometimes I need more um, to get the form of the bird and I pick my colours so you see for then I pick my colours so you see for the peacock here I've got um, sort of I visually I don't normally do this but I visually kind of put all the different colours out there and um, but there tend to be no, it's normally less colours needed than that so for example on the kingfisher here we've got um, two shades of orange, two shades of blue, and white, and that's it. But um, I pick my colours. I pick, um, I see if I need to buy any new paint to make those colours. So now I'm upgrading to um, better paints. These are all the colours I have so far. Um, I'm pretty well covered now, I think, with the golden paints. Um, for most commissions. So for example for the peacock um, I bought in this, come on camera focus, I bought in this, so so for example for the peacock I bought in this um, magenta pink and this um, very deep purple and the price of these varies according to the colour but they've got real mineral pigments in them so for example this little tube here was £13.50 here is a work in progress kingfisher. This is the first bird I've done with completely using the um, new golden paints, and all of my little birds will be <coughs> sorry, and all of my little birds from now on will be using these new paints. And you may not be able to see, but there's a nice sort of sheen on there, a bit like you get with an oil painting. And this paint is completely dry, so the quality of these paints um, really shows through. This picture here was done with um, mostly with my other paints, so not as high quality paints as I'm about to use on Mr. Kingfisher here. Um, but you can kind of see the colours there, you can see what colours he's going to have. And um, you can see that this is basically the same pose, um, but I've sort of tightened this up a little bit, tried to get nice and compact. and. Um, sleek like I was talking about in my last art video get them nice and compact and sleek as kingfishers are and also smaller um, because really the way these pictures work is that the bird is sort of floating it's not the blood the the birds not filling the whole frame the bird is sort of floating in the middle of this sort of sea of color same way the wren that I did was and I think that's what makes these pictures um, I don't know, that's what's nice about these pictures, so I want to keep that quality to them where there's, you know, there's lots of space around and the bird is just sort of being brought out of that space. And yeah, so that's how I do my little birdies. So here's that same kingfisher, um, nearly finished. I just, come to focus a minute. Um, so you'll see I've now put a couple more shades of blue on and all he needs is some white under here and some white highlights and then he'll be finished. He's actually already sold um, but I am hopefully making greetings cards of this one. Um, I'll just show you, I will show you this because this is a surprise for my friend Frances for her birthday and I'm sure that by the time this video goes up she'll have had her birthday. She'll have had her birthday um, the last day of February. She actually gets a birthday um, this year because she was born on leap year. But um, this is a painted version of one of my, um, I will call it a mega doodle because I was doing them before mandalas were cool. <laughs> and I always called it a mega doodle. And it doesn't have um, any meaning really. It's just something enjoyable to do. So I don't feel like I can call it a mandala or mandala, but um, this is an example 
of a painted version of one of my mega doodles. Normally I just do them in black pen. There's a painted version and then here is how I normally do them which is just black pen, um, a fine liner, a uni pen fine liner, size 0.3 and I just start in the middle and work my way outwards. But um, I might make some colouring sheets of these sorts of things if people like them. So um, let me know if this is something you like. I kind of discovered by accident that it's something people like. I always used to just do them um, as a kind of relaxation process, I guess, and just in my doodle journal. Um, people seem to really like these and want these, so here's some more of those um, doodles that I showed last time, slightly bigger ones. So there's one which I drew slightly larger than shrunk down. And um, here's one that I drew um, smaller and zoomed up. So you can see there's varying levels of detail there. And hopefully I can get feedback from people about what level of detail they like. Not all of the colouring sheets I do are quite so um, flowery and organic. Um, so here's one I'm working on at the moment. It's a little bit more graphic, a little bit more sort of patterny. So if you want any of these, um, I'm literally, everything is just in its um, trial phase, I guess, with these. So, um, but you can drop me an email at paintedagainsam at outlook.com if you want some of these, and I will send you a whole load of A4 ones. And then um, I might, I'd really appreciate some feedback on what you liked and didn't like about them. And then I will, because I was keeping this as a secret project, I have plans for, for these style um, drawings, but um, I'm going to get some colouring sheets made soon um, and do that. But um, feedback much, much appreciated. Um, my camera's getting really full up, so I'm going to finish off this um, art update, this two-part art update. And um, yeah, I will show you more from the studio soon. Bye for now.